for today. And um, the question is, how do you boost your work ethic? How do you add more value in your place of work? So looking at just an overview, when it comes to adding value uh, as an employee, you know, you could do it and it comes with a lot of values. It comes with a lot of um, benefits and it all depends on how you get to look at it. Now, including when it comes to improving your career, you know, growing big and growing big and getting paid more, boosting and also finding ways to more or less gain anatomy in every area in your career. So pretty much looking at all of these things, it really depends on your ability to really forge ahead. So the goal today is to understand how you can navigate these dynamics. Um, I can remember some years ago when I used to have a full-time job. Uh, I have some colleagues that usually they are always afraid that they may be sacked at any point in time. And you know what? I was never afraid. And I'm going to be sharing some of the secrets why I was never afraid. And um, one of the reasons why we call on this AI playbook to be able to explain how we can boost our confidence and also understand that it is important that we do all what it takes or what is necessary to be able to upskill ourselves. So, I mean, um, to guide this conversation, there are a couple of things that we um, need to consider. Um, I have broken them into two categories. The first is eight ways to add value at work. So we're going to be looking at eight ways you can add value at your place of work. You know, so pretty much how do you more or less just add value. So we're going to be looking at eight ways you can do that. Um, secondly, we're also going to be looking at um, what does your boss really like? You know, what does your boss love to see in an employee? You know, so we're going to be looking at all of that. Um, and I think one final last segment is that we're also going to be examining, uh, we're going to try to examine how you can um, leverage on AI to be able to do all of these things that we're talking about. But first, um, what does adding value as an employee really means? Like when you hear that term, adding value, what, are they, what, what, what comes to your mind? Is it what actually comes to your mind? I just want you to take some moment right now to think about it as an employee or as somebody who gets to do business with people, what comes to your mind? when you hear the term adding values, right? So from my perspective, when it comes to adding value, it means that every action you take should actually actually grow the company. And that's, that's the goal, right? Everything you do, every action that you take should actually take the company from one step to at least another. That is what it means adding value. So take for instance, think about it this way. No employer would hire you just because you're fine. No employer will hire you just because you just can't talk. There has to be one fundamental value that you get to add. So when we talk about adding value as an employee, we're talking about what is that thing that you add on a day-to-day -day basis that pushes the company from where it is towards the goal that what is designed to be achieved. That's what it really means. And sometimes when you understand these things very well, um, you sort of like differentiate yourself from every other employee who just come to work every day and get to just get their job done. More like a robotic sort of things. No evaluation of what they get to do. So now let us also consider, so developing your skills um, or developing the businesses includes helping to save, save resources, um, taking into consideration what works uh, and also understanding that sometimes when you are, when you want to be very valuable, you need to know that they don't need to ask you to do something before you get to do those things, in as much as you know those things are relevant. And also identifying areas that need improvement and becoming a valuable, you know, 
critical thinker when it comes to all of these things. So in other words, it is important that you find a way to understand the pain points within your organization. It is also important to understand that you should learn to critically think how you can help solve these problems. All right, so identifying how um, best to add value, you know, what this really means is that you would have to understand and figure out what the organization need most. For some people, you've been working for like five years, um, you've been working for two, three years, and you've not been able to figure out what your organization really needs. And you know, it, it calls for a really huge concern as somebody who is working to achieve a goal. What is it that really means so much to your organization? If you haven't figured that out, then that's a loophole. It's part of what you need to really figure out. Now, moving forward, you also need to understand certain things. Now, what do you want to consider if you really want to understand the pattern? I have some list here. Some of the questions you need to ask yourself if you really want to add value to your organization. And some of those, the first question I have is, what are the short and long-term business goals? You know, for some employees, they don't even know all of these things. Maybe your job is to um, clean. Maybe you are just your job is to ensure that the environment are clean. But you don't know the rules. You don't know the goals of the business. You know, maybe your job is to ensure that some goods are delivered. But the bottom line is, you don't know what it takes. So, if you don't know the goal, there's no way you can really contribute values. Another point is, you know, what does my boss like to see what does your boss really love to see in you because at the end of the day uh, don't always consider your current situation just consider the next step that you hope to be then the best way to be able to pan out things well is when you begin to imagine yourself in that position i was reading a book and the book was really saying that the best way to get yourself promoted is behaving as though you are in that position already. And what what do I mean? So imagine that you want to assume a managerial position and for some reasons you haven't in a way, you haven't in a way find means to understand how to manage people. So what are you going to manage? Who is going to spot you? Yeah? The bottom line is find every way, every reason to understand that you manage yourself. When you manage yourself, it is important that you begin to see how you can manage other people. So, put it this way, if you want to, um, if you want to uh, find something very important to do, just ensure that you Oh, let me just put it this way. So let's say for instance, let's say for instance, I want to become um, a manager of a particular organization. Now, that doesn't mean that you should create enmity with the current manager. It just means that what is the current manager doing that you as well can start trying to do? How does the manager carry his or herself? How do they execute things? How do they speak to people? When you understand all of these bottom lines, it will really help you. Or let me even bring it down. For those who are still looking for a job, you're still looking for employment. How does the people who are employed do? How do they do things? You know, how do they carry out the activities? How about you start behaving like such? It could even start from the dress. You know, how do they dress? How about you start behaving like such? So um, let us let us um, find a way to understand how they behave. When we understand how they behave, things become very, very fine and things become very easy. When you then understand how they behave, you need to start training yourself. You know, don't be like those kind of people where when it is when they find the opportunity, 
um, to become to assume that position, they now begin to run up and down. And when they begin to run up and, up and down, it's um, it's it's something that you know they manage and they begin to struggle with. How about you get ready? How about you get ready before the time? It makes life quite easy. In fact, it makes people to spot you. When you're ready on time, it makes people spot you. It makes people realize you on time. Oh, this guy is going to be fit for this role. This guy is going to be available for this role. And that's what we're really talking about in this very edition. Another thing is, what is the core value? You know, first we spoke about what is the business goal. Now I am asking, what is the core value? The core value of the business. Because every business wants to uphold their core value. For instance, at Instinct of one of our core value is we, are, we strive to help others achieve success. So helping people obtain the skills that they need to transition from whatever they have to something better is what means a lot to us. So when you don't understand the business core value, it's always very, very, very hard for you to find a way to leverage and make things better. Now, another point here is you need to also understand uh, who, um, who is on the leadership team and what do they value. You need to know your leader as well. You need to know them very, very well because if you don't, you won't know how to treat them. I used to have um, some set of managers that I know how to relate with every one of them. So it's important that you find a way to actually leverage the relationship with every of those. Remember, we're talking about adding value to your organization. And sometimes, some of you may be thinking right now, oh, I just want to hear about technology, you know. Yeah, but the truth is that technology is just an enabler. It is when you understand some of these fundamental things that you can then ask yourself, okay, which aspect of it can I imbibe technology to make things even far efficient? So let's move on. You know, how does the company define business growth? You know, is it customer acquisition? Is it um, sales leads? Is it uh, more profit? You know, what's, how do they measure growth? We need to understand that. For some businesses, it could be um, app download, interactions with the applications. Um, for some, it could be sales. Whatever it is, you need to understand how does your business measure growth. You know, after that, let us look at the final point here. You know, so now, what is the problem? What problem exists that your company isn't yet addressing? Just imagine that you're that guy that figure out things before every other person. Now, yes, I know that there'll be some setback. It is not every time that you come up with ideas that people will buy in. How about you even come up with the idea and they feel to buy in? And some months or some years later, they realize and they come to a conclusion that they are going to do that. Maybe God so good, somebody is going to remember that, oh, so, so, so person said that some years ago or some months ago, but we didn't do anything. Let's even say they didn't even acknowledge you. It's fine. But for your own personal being, that is an accolade because you've seen what they didn't see some years ago. Whether they didn't listen to you or not was a different thing. But just the fact that they are later than doing what you have recommended some months ago, you are supposed to pat yourself at the back and feel really happy. Alright, so now, the point I am trying to make here, you know, so if you don't know the answer to these questions, right, it's not something bad. Uh, it is just a time for you to keep asking the right question, you know, so you can just reference all of this question that I ask again and ask yourself, do you have answers to all of the questions? And if you don't, it is important that you start asking the right people to give you answers to that. Now, so you're already, you know, adding value by bringing this conversation up, you know, ask, by asking those questions, you're already bringing it up because you're showing some level of critical thinking and you're actually taking on an initiative. Not every employee does things like this. Ask critical questions. 
clinch to the company goal. Understand the value proposition. What means a lot to that business? So that anything you're thinking about will be channeled to what really means a lot to that business. And that's what we're talking about. The moment you understand those questions, the next thing is how do you then begin to execute them? So let's really dive into some of the things I have for you here. So the next point is how, how well or how will your skill align to all of these questions you've asked? Remember, whenever you hear the term technology, technology is just a solution. It's an enabler. If you cannot think, it won't help. you just be there. Just like I was talking to a friend some years ago. And guess what? The lady was going to buy a very high-end uh, high MacBook Pro. Guess what the person wants to use the MacBook Pro to do? To watch movie. To watch movie. So sometimes you could have this technology just by your hands. But your level of exposure and knowledge is the best you can achieve with that technology. The same reason why you will see some people with systems that are not, or computers that are not looking nice, but they come up with something very, very astonishing. So let us get something straight here. Technology is just there. Your level of exposure and knowledge determines what you can do with it. And my goal at the end of this conversation is to really energize you, to begin to rethink so that you can really understand the problem before you and find ways to use technology within your closet to be able to solve some of this problem. Now, so the question I'm to ask you right now is, what can you do to further your, the business goal and accelerate growth? You know, what can you do? What are those things that you can do? All right. Now, um, before we move on, before we dive deeper into this conversation, um, I really want us to understand this movement. So this very edition or this series is what I call AI Workshop. And on your screen right now, you'll be seeing how to participate and, and join the community, right? So pretty much I have compiled list of links. All you need to do right now is to just check um, this very link. Um, I think I can as well drop the link um, you know we can just type the link and check what you would see is um, what you would see uh, let's just you know take some few moments to try it out uh, so what you would see is the link tree right um, the link tree that shows how you can really connect uh, with this movement so you can see the link tree uh, this is the registration. I assume that when you're on this call already, you got an email from us, so which means perhaps you already registered. If you haven't, you can do that so that we can find ways to connect and keep you in sync. And also, um, we love to have feedbacks. All of these things that I will be saying, some of you may have questions particular to you. I want you to ask me those questions. So provide us feedback and one of the fields give you the opportunity to ask questions and you never can tell i can discuss your question in the next episode so there are a couple of things you can join here we have slack um we have discord rather we have also whatsapp group that you can join we also have um the ai uh, uh playbook whatsapp channel uh, you can also you know chat me directly in case you have some direct questions you can more or less just ask these questions so i am going to try as much as i can to drop that on the chat i am just going to um so it's called the uh, link tree link t r e t r dot e e dot um four slash um no lato i am going to drop that with my colleagues right now and um, they will help me to to drop that on the on the chat so pretty much um find a way to understand how these things work find a way to uh what's it called find a way to ensure that you are also part of the people who understand how the business work don't just be that employee who focus on making money just be that part of employee that also 
understand the business uh, problem and also able to to contribute um so one may ask one question you may ask me right now is why adding value why does adding value matter you know why does what does this what why, why should i especially when the company is not paying you well especially when uh, you feel like you're not well compensated especially when you feel like you're not valued so why should you even bother you know why should you bother why should you why 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 should you for for god's sake but here you know having value to a business is not just about the business for every value you add is an added value to you and one thing that is very important is that once you add that value to yourself, nobody can take it away. It becomes you. You know, sometimes we may think, oh, I don't want to, I just want to be in my lane. But the truth is that you can be in your lane forever and nobody cares. Because in real sense, that's your place of work. Nobody really, really cares. Nobody cares. Everybody just come, it just... Is in form of a market everybody comes to the market do their business at the end of the day everybody go back home so nobody really cares so if you're trying to play a mind game and because of that you're not really going all out to drive impact you're just doing yourself you're not doing anyone else you're just doing yourself okay so adding value is while the, the impact may be felt in the company it also helps you secure your job um you know you see your benefits it helps you keep your jobs if employers um don't see the reasons why they should lay you off they can't you know this also make me remember in my working days um I, I i didn't have as much understanding as i have now so in some ways i was not a good communicator you know i was i find it very hard to let some things go because I would tell you the way they are and I don't like to be tossed here and there. I just want to be straightforward with the conversation and I want you to let you know what I am currently doing so that you don't overkill me with work. So while I was doing all of that, meanwhile, I was stepping on some people's toes. I would say I knew it, but I would say I care less, you know. But what then happened was that I think it got to a point that I was supposed to be sacked. But they just couldn't let me go because I may not have the right attitude, but I have the right skill set. So here's the thing. A business can let you go if you have the right attitude. But a business can retain you if you have the right skill. Let me put it well so that you understand. An employee will a right attitude without the right skill is valueless in the company. But if you have the right skill without the right attitude, you're likely to retain your job. But here is now the disadvantage. If you don't have the right attitude and you have the right skill, now right attitude in this term, you can refer them as soft skills. If you don't have the soft skills, what you're doing to yourself is you're denying yourself growth. While you may keep your job, you may not grow in the job because you lack the soft skill to help you grow in that same job. So put it this way, soft technical skills, you need them side by side. Like you can't do away with any of them. You just need those two to be able to um, get better. So as promised, I promise you guys that we're gonna be discussing eight ways to add value at work and i want to be as practical as possible all of the things i've said are just overview my goal right now is to let's go into it like let's look at one if you can actually even do five out of these eight things i think you'll be a superstar if you can just chunk out five items out of all the things that we listed then i think you are on the right track so i mean I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this uh, because the first on my list is you need to know what you do best. 
majority of times we struggle between jobs and this is very sad because um, you go to work every day and you struggle you struggle because you move from a to z without really strategizing whether you should be doing a or z in real sense so my point is that just just know where your strengths are know where you perform well and know where you don't so that you don't overkill yourself there's no point there's no point trying to burn yourself out in areas where you're not good because the moment you know you're not good in that area you can always leverage on others who are good remember at the end of the day is the end result so some of the ways you need to look at it is what are your technical strengths you know is it in customer relations um do you know is yours in coding is it in leadership is yours in critical thinking problem solving empathy for some it could just be that in a situation that is tensed your job you can just de-escalate situation and everybody will be fine for some they are very gifted in that for some it may be emotional awareness you know maybe when some customers are you know, just ranting into all manner of things some people are just very gifted in just using emotional intelligence to de-escalate that situation and prefer solution that is perfect in that situation you need to know where yeah, that's your strength where is it so that you will sharpen it well and be able to use it in a, in a way that the business will feel the impact so one know know what you are what you do best what you're good at and two meet expectations in fact exceed expectations if you can this is very annoying right you know because i work with teams and it's very annoying when employees fail to meet expectations it's is is mind-blowing like it's 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 hard to deal with because one thing as an employee that you need to understand is that for everything that is assigned to you your output is another person's input if one person fail as an employee you may cause the rest of the team to fail let's even say they achieve a shallow success it may be because of you that they didn't achieve that optimal result how about we find a way as an employee that in everything you find yourself everywhere in every point you find yourself they give you that task all you just need to do is at least meet expectations then along the way if you want to exceed expectation ex- want to exceed expectation you know i give you just thumbs up if you want to really exceed the expectation it's allowed but the most annoying is not meeting the expectation so please one of the things you need to do is exceed it exceed at least if you want to exceed or the least meet expectations don't procrastinate don't start executing die minutes to and you think you're going to achieve the success that you desire to have number three identify and solve problems this is very very important you know it is this is about think about significant challenges in the business anything you think this business is facing for some it may be customer retention for some it may be getting new customers for some it may be customer relationship for some it may be getting the business to sync the technologies to come together and make sense out of it whatever it is understand the problem and solve them you know identify the problem and solve the problem it's very important and you know you 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 need to be excessively interested um, to be able to find how you can solve these things you need to it's something you need to be intentional about right um it's not something that uh, you would expect anybody to help you do first you need to identify those problem yourself you need to identify it like you need to be the one to identify that problem and one of the things i would let me just tell you one secret how about you're the first to identify a problem in an organization how about is you they know that this guy he has the ego's eye is likely to spot this problem how about is you that spot this problem and let's see how that works 
Now I have a checklist for you, you know, I came fully prepared and um, part of the checklist is so for you to be able to understand the business problem first, you need to clearly define the problem. If you want to solve the problem for the business, you need to define the problem, put it in clear words. So here's the thing, I have problem with some people. You have an idea. The moment that thing just click in your head, pam, all that comes to your mind, you're running to your manager to go and talk about it. And guess what? With, with, between like 10 seconds, your manager will just talk it down and boom, the whole thing get blows off. The reason is because you haven't really thought through the process. You, you haven't even validated the idea. You don't even know whether what you're thinking makes sense. So how about you have this checklist? When you have an idea, write it down, define the problem, like write it, spell it out. I have seen that customers don't get to return XYZ product because this, 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 that. Now, when you then identify, you define that problem. The next is, which is number two, you define the goal to achieve it. Like how do you pretty much understand the goal? to achieve this problem like how do you see how do you ensure that you find a goal you define step by step goal or the goal to achieve that problem statement that you have defined the next point is you need to identify the cause of the issue for some it may just be some weak policies for some it may just be lack of employee morals you know for some it may just be lack of funding whatever it is you need to understand the root cause don't be like those set of people who just try to solve problem but they are not going to turn the problem off from the source so learn to turn it off from the source don't be that kind of people who just get to do shallow implementation number four is you need to also develop and execute an action plan to eliminate it for some you may not even be a project manager focused person you don't know how to plan. Yes, that's what we are talking about here. Learn it. Relate with a, a, an employer or a, a colleague of yours that have an idea of how to execute things. Yes, learn it. And number four, number five, rather, evaluate results and understand how to do better. Majority of these things won't pan out well. It is okay. Evaluate it. You know and figure out how to do better in your next engagement and finally improve repeat the process you know you iterate the process again and again and again that's how we idea that's how we born new ideas you know so just try it out so this um, six list try it out and I hope that it is very helpful so now what I'm saying in essence is that it is better that you're very good at identifying and solving problems, you know, without being asked. It is very important. You know, the more value you add to your employer, the better it is. Just put yourself in an environment where you're not the kind of person that is being told before you get to do things that are necessary to the business. Remember, I'm not saying about high service here. You knew that this is going to impact the business in a certain way and you act. This doesn't also mean overworking yourself. You know, in acting, it could be that you're working up to an employee that is responsible for that job and advise them. Please don't go in form of giving order. Don't go in form of escalating any provocative comment. Just go in... In fact, go open-minded that the person is going to accept or not accept. Go in form of giving recommend. Ah, do you think, oh, I, I just noticed so so thing. Do you, do you think if you do it this way, it's going to make a lot of sense? And watch them do it with joy. But for some of us, because, oh, you're the idea owner, you see it. And because you, you want to feel that on top, you're going there with full force. And that is not going to work, you know, because nobody even likes to be corrected in the real sense. It takes a lot of training for people to take correction. So you need to really understand that. Four, focus on the results. I know for some of us, we find it very, very hard to understand this thing. But please, focus on the results. This is very important. 
ideas are great, but results are way, way better. Your idea, fantastic. Result, 100%. You know, um, in, in building this business, we've, I've worked with a couple of people, especially marketers. Oh, goodness. Marketers, I give you guys thumbs up. You know, marketers, they will tell you a manner of sweet things. Only very few are very sincere about impact, about results. So for some of us, we make mouth a lot. You will say manner of things that you cannot do. And there is nothing even committing yourself in certain ways. But the, the thing is that the day you commit yourself, let it be that that is the day you sign up sleepless nights. Do everything you can. Do everything you can to be a resort-driven person. Don't just be a mount mount, talk, talk, talk. You know, nah. Be a resort-driven person. You know, you need to meticulously track everything you do and gather data. Why did I succeed in this one? Why didn't I? What was wrong? What wasn't? See, everything I am talking about right now may sound very compelling, may sound very sweet, may sound very... You may like it, but if you don't add action everything I am saying at the end of this conversation, it's just like I've wasted my time. And I know that, at least to a very large extent, you wouldn't want me to waste my time. So it's important we action some of these things. So please, be a results-driven person. If anybody is saying anything, let your gaze be on the result because it is that result that will serve as a source of motivation in every area that you find yourself. Now, back to my call to action again, please and please. Uh, this is actually my new initiative about AI playbook and uh, the goal is to just equip individuals with the technology skills that they need to take that competitive advantage in their place of work. So um, just scan this code and all I need you to do is to follow all our groups. We have WhatsApp group, we have WhatsApp channel, we also have Discord channel that you can also belong to. And um, if you haven't registered for this course, you can and you'll be getting tips from me on a regular basis right so just scan this very code and um, we'll also send the link but if you can right now just as i am talking so that you don't get to forget you know follow us on those group and pretty much i really want to help you and i hope that we can make this a collaborative effort number five on the list is work to improve bottom line you need to work to improve the bottom line see whether you like it or not, money is what keeps every company afloat. Revenue is what keeps every company afloat. The more you can help a business to actualize this source of living, the more valuable you can become. Have you ever wondered why the set of people who make more money in an organization are the guys who are into customer acquisition because they are so very close to making money for the business now i'm not saying that you should start doing marketing for the business but how about you're also interested in how the business make money and being interested could also be sharing what the organization does for some employees they don't care they see the post of the organization on social media they just walk past it you don't know that little step, that little, you don't know. And sometimes by not valuing all these small, small things are things that really affect us. You know, so please, please and please, I am actually begging you, you know, although not effort amount to the bottom line, which is finances, you know, but the, 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 the summary of the whole thing is that every of your value should positively influence or affect the business you know or impact the business everything you get to do you know not every of your efforts will result in money you know but let every of your efforts result to an impact positive impact on the business now let's move on to the next segment now why ways to um, improve business finances so how how can you you know you can just ask you're asking me right now so oh no how can i improve 
the business finances? What can I do to improve my business or my organization's business finances? Let's look at the first one. The first one is reducing customer complaints. Do you know that some customers just complain? Um, and I will give one example. You know, sometimes myself, uh, my wife and I, some, when we go to buy some things or when we go to eateries, we get to just call the attendants, the, the people who get to attend to us. You know, I remember when we were at Abuja, we couldn't forget the guy that, you know, attended to us. If he didn't want to buy anything because of that guy's smile, because of how the guy treats you, you will buy. I remember the first day I went to buy some things. My plan was to spend 10,000 naira. But because of how this guy treated me, I ended up spending almost 30k. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. This guy is not into, is not, um, is not the sales representative, he's not the one that does the social media. He, he just attends to customers. But, but his reception is just a mind blowing thing. And also, we, were also, we also went to a, a cinema at, at Lagos here, and there was also a guy who attended to us, and you could see the reception teasing us on what to buy, what not to buy, you know, and you feel very connected. So yours may just be that not making customers to complain alone is enough. Do you know if I'm to rate some of those guys, I'm going to give them five stars. I'm going to give them, there's even ten stars, I'm going to do it. But the question is, if somebody is to rate you, somebody is to rate you, how many stars will they give you? For some, it may not even be up to one. If there's 0.5, they'll get that. The next point is, you know, make processes more efficient in executing your day-to-day -day activities. How are you making those things more efficient? The fact that the company has said use point A to B does not mean that it has to be point A to B. You can, you know, you can find a way to bring the conversation up and tell your company that you know if you follow these routes, you're gonna get XYZ. And when they try it, if it works, they'll follow it. See, every business wants efficiency, but sometimes employ employees don't really just bring this recommendation. Increasing sales is also one of the points. You know, one of the points is increasing sales. So the bottom line is, um, if you can find ways to help the business to increase sales, I've had some employ employees who had helped in the past to design programs that brought in people. You know. That's what we're talking about. And also, boosting marketing converse conversion. You can also help in boosting marketing conversion. You don't need to be a specialist. All this thing is talk, talk, talk. You have friends, you have people in your connection. Just talk, hey, this thing, this is, this is, don't go over promise, but just be realistic. You just talk, you just talk. And you know, you, you never can tell things that you'll be able to do along the way. Another point is, you know, filling roles faster with more qualified um, employees. You could just have some some friends, some network of people that you think may be beneficial to the em employer. You can recommend them. You know, sometimes when you do all of these recommendations, it is not your call whether they employ them or not. Your job is to just make those recommendations. If they take action, glory to God, you know. And also, so... Another way you can also improve business finances is monitoring your teams, uh, your team to improve their contributions. This last point just means that it's not all about you. Sometimes you need to carry em employees around. I mean, your. Sometimes you need to carry your team along, because you also remember I said earlier that when they fail, you fail. There you go. So that's very important. So my point here is, you know, no matter your role, make contributions with the bottom line in your mind. All right. Make contribution with the bottom line in your mind. And that's the point right now. Number six is improve technical and interpersonal skill. Nobody should even tell you this. I shouldn't even be the one saying this to you that you need to improve your interpersonal, how you relate to people and your technical skills is very important. You need to, you don't even have a choice. You need to, 
you know, seek out educational opportunities and outside work. Either at your place of work or outside work, just seek anywhere people are learning new things. Let it be that you derive joy in learning something new. So if your company offer uh, employee, uh, employee development opportunity, take them. So because we provide training for corporate bodies, we've seen all manner of things. For some employees, they just they don't take it serious. They just feel like somebody is stressing them. Excuse me. Nobody is stressing you. This is your call. Whenever, whenever an employer trains you, that skill retains in you. It's, it's, it becomes part and parcel of you. The day you leave the organization is still part of you. So that the employer is training you in a certain way. They are just trying to do two things. Help you to get better. And because they know that when you get better, that would then translate into their business. And one of the reasons why employers too are training people is because employers are always seeking for new talent. Remember, that new talent, someone else trained the person. So what impact are you doing to the one that you have right now? So it's more like a circular thing. So if you belong to that set of people that when it comes to training and development, you don't care. <laughs> The way you're being left behind, the day you realize the boss would have gotten to the other bus stop. And meanwhile, there's no other bus to pick you to that same bus stop. Okay, so it's important that you understand that these skills, you can't joke with them. Seven, take initiatives. You know, I know we're running out of time, right? So I'll just try to rush things up. Take initiative. Do what is necessary without being told. I dislike this part when you have to tell people to do something. No! Just understand what is necessary. You know, I'm being passionate about this conversation because I am also at the receiving end. I'm, I'm at the receiving end. Do what is necessary. Do it. Use your brain to do what is necessary. Do you know what it means when you do that? You improve the entire process. Your own subconscious becomes perfection. Yeah? Now, let's look at number eight. Focus on your reputation. It's important. Your reputation is on the line here. Your reputation affects every aspect of the company. So, if you don't pay attention to your reputation, then you're actually preparing to spoil everything you've been working for. Your reputation is on the line. And what makes you think businesses quickly either suspend or fire people with one thing or the other that may tarnish the image of the company? They do it! You know, instantly. So your reputation matters. So pay attention to that. So uh, the better you present your company, the more value you add. So when you do all of these things, you know, what is in for you? I know that's the question some of you are asking now. What is in for me if I do all of these things? If I am this committed to the business, what is in for me? The first thing I have is purpose and meaningful work. You won't follow that set of people who just go to work every day. And what they do is routine. You have a purpose. Every day waking up and going to work, you wake up fresh, renewed. You won't because you know every time you feel fatigued from your work, you actually it's, it's more like a depression. So we're talking about your own mental well well being. So the moment you pay attention to all of those points I have made, you've created a purpose and meaningful work for yourself. The must is strong employee benefits. You, you either you like it or not, somebody is going to spot you one day. Somebody is going to spot you one day, and also professional development opportunity. When you put all of this thing together, you're actually developing yourself. Think it is yourself. Because at the end of the day, you cannot do it for yourself anyways. We all render services and we render services to other people. So if you're thinking oh, you're not going to be sitting up and working for your organization as expected, you're not doing anybody good. You're just, it's, it's you. Because we are, we, are, we are created to serve. And the moment you understand this, you serve your company better. Next point is, is a two-way dialogue. Um, you know, two-way dialogue feedback. Don't think you are the only, always the right person. Seek feedback. Act on those feedback. 
give people feedback get feedback and get things done um, positively you know so positive employee experience is also what you're going to get you're going to enjoy your work you're going to enjoy your work because you always have this positive vibe you always have this positive vibe this energy then you're likely to also be empathetic and that's what it takes to become a leader in any organization when you put all of these things i've mentioned you know so understanding um of your life outside work it gives you that perspective you know and also it helps you feel valued when you do nobody will do all of these things and feel less valued now whether they acknowledge you for that or not you know see value should be from the inside let your satisfaction be from the inside not from the outside because guess what people can heal you today crucify you tomorrow but let that your value let that your conviction be from the inside because and how can you get it from the inside you say you're going to do xyz you not only meet expectations you exceed expectations and that's what i'm talking about here you know so pretty much let us try to look at quickly the ai skills that we can add just to bring this conversation to a close i know majority of you um should be having some level of rethink on how we approach things right now but that's the idea so the ai skills you need you know ai fundamentals for non-tech roles is important for some of us right now the only thing you know about ai is when they say ai, AI what comes to your mind is chat gemini come on it's more than that right understand ai fundamentals um you also need to understand um transforming business um operation with ai like how can you some analog things that your business are doing how can you migrate those things into and automated processes you know better decision with data in the last edition i spoke about data a lot you know better decision with data and the bottom line is, again is how can you also understand the tools to start using ai the right way what are the tools available for you you know to start using to start doing things the right way technologically and finally enhance your role with ai you know what's what's how can you enhance your role enhancing your role with ai these things are very very important people may not be telling you but i am telling you right now nobody is going to improve you for you it's a personal call and you have to be at the forefront of that so let's see how i can quickly dive into some of these points and let's call this a wrap when we talk about fundamentals of ai's we are talking about get familiar with ai basics in real world the real world application you know making it accessible at your professional background just the question is what are people using ai to do in your field now what is it and how does the ai work you know how, how, aren't you amazed how will i just put in a prompt and it's going to analyze all those things and give me back answers that look like something very intelligent how it's beyond just what you see in my last previous um, engagement i spoke about the processes it takes for the ai to do that so some of you can you can still reference that and see how some of these things work so understand the fundamentals go to google search these things informations are there majority of us are just okay with where we are transforming businesses you know with with, with uh, transforming business operations with ai see the practical example you know from companies both in nigeria and beyond how they are using ai in the in the agricultural sector some already are, are using drones you know in the um banking sectors they are using ai to detect frauds they are using ai to automate processes think it through find a way to learn see until you understand these things you won't even know what to learn in the first place you won't also better decision with ai you can while all every other employ employees your colleagues are just there you, you are taking informed decision with data imagine you even know the the list of employees that are likely to leave the job in the, in the, in the, in the next following year like a couple of months you know who is leaving the job you may not tell anybody but you just know based on what 
you, the, the data before you or you know how much the business is likely to make and you go to the boss and say look if you implement this xyz they will make so 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 new customers guess what these things give you bargaining power it gives you additional power to ask for more now so tools to start using ai the right way there are many tools far far beyond chat gbt and gemini there are many tools that help you automate processes that helps you group emails that help you send automations that help you do all manner of things there are tools the bottom line is do you know which tool they are i may not be able to tell you word for word but guess what go to google right now say what ai tool do i need as, as an accountant you will see a lot of them read them through there may be a lot of information to cover but guess what there's a starting point now enhancing your role with ai you need to understand what ai can do for you what you need to do for yourself what ai can do and the ways that you can do it and positioning yourself as a forward-thinking person don't just carry verbatim what AI is saying, bam, uh, bam, everything, just like that. No! You have to be very constructive. Know what to give AI, know what to do for yourself. Know when to consult other people, know when to validate what AI is saying. And that's what we're talking about here. So, in conclusion, this is the era where everything is changing. Everything, everything. From the way we relate with each other to the way we execute product, everything is changing. You know, so mastering AI isn't just an advantage. Or mastering any technology is not just an advantage, it is a necessity to thrive. Mastering technology skills is a necessity to thrive. Nobody is going to pity you because you stay with the company for a long time. Nobody. So it is a necessity, having this technical skill, a necessity. See, the way I look at this thing, you may not have the money to invest in real estate, but you have the resources to invest in yourself. Lagos State, for instance, may say maybe train or pink line. Since they have red line, blue line, they may have pink line and say, pink line will drive to a particular infrastructure that may be some people's investment that investment may go away but whatever you put into yourself stays forever so i want I, there's no way i can overemphasize this but my point is that try as much as you can to invest in yourself there's no brain no brain up with that just try as much as you can to invest in yourself i'm pretty much that is how we wrap it up for today. Let me see how many minutes more I have taken from your time. Oh, two minutes. Well, I am so sorry. I have to spill past the time. But guess what? It is for the benefit of what we're trying to discuss here. So, like I mentioned again, if you're just joining, you can join this community. This series comes up every Thursday by 12 noon, right? I just come to share my experience with you on how you can become very very inclined so please all you need to do for me right now on your screen is just type or scan what you have on the back on the screen right now and follow our whatsapp group follow our slack um, our discourse group and also follow our, our whatsapp channel and please provide me a feedback i would love to hear from you I would love to even talk about what really makes sense to you or what your challenges are. For some of you, you don't even really know how to navigate into um, in the tech ecosystem currently. Just give me feedback. So today, because I have exceeded the time, I am not going to be taking some questions. All I want you to do is to follow this link on your screen. And once you follow the link, try as much as you can to give us a review and give us a feedback and once we get that feedback i would review it and see if it's something i can even talk about before sharing my my topic or whatever i have for the following week so please let's make this conversational uh, we're going to be sending you notifications to keep you um, um, updated the goal is that we help you get the right skills so pretty much I also want to use this opportunity to let you know that on in the next couple of weeks uh, we are having uh, what we call 
AI Workshop Lagos 2024. AI Workshop Lagos 2024. That is where we're going to be helping employees to have practical skills they need to strive. Practical, you know, all of these things I am saying right now are theoretical in nature. You know, they are descriptive. But that very day is where we're going to have the practical skills that you need. You're going to be learning programming languages. You're going to be learning automations. You're going to be learning how to actually use current business existing data to predict the customer who is likely to leave the business. And I'll tell you why. Several other people right now focus on getting new customers. Nobody is focusing on which customer is about to leave. That is what this AI workshop is all about. Bring people together, show them the practicality on how they can have these practical skills. So please just join this movement and let's keep the conversation on. I can't wait to see what we can achieve together because the bottom line is I want you to remember that there was a time you got an information, you acted on it and here you are with a success story. And just to set the context for next week, next week we're going to be looking at another topic and it's going to be stay is the topic is coined as a continuation of this you know how to stay ahead of competitors using ai powered customer insights how to stay ahead of competitions using ai powered insight it is not something you want to miss it is not something you should miss i expect you to actually invite people to join this session as well so invite your friends on every thursday by 12 noon we're just going to be examining how we can use technology to be able to solve some of these problems so we're going to be looking at how we can use ai to stay at the top front by next thursday and that's how we wrap it up on this one please again don't forget to join the community and ask me questions and i should be able to answer you thank you so much uh, for all of you that joined thank you to the team um, for supporting and making this happen and um, also i'll say i'll see you guys all in the next one do have a fantastic thursday bye bye guys